My name is Cornelia Harris. I'm 16 years old and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I live with my mother and my two brothers. I hope take care of them. Outside of school, well, since I'm in care, you know, Wednesdays and Fridays, I have family visits, so I go see my grandmother. Good morning, Isaiah. Good morning, Keja. How are you? I live in bed with my foster mom. I've been in three so far, and this home I try not to be there. Broom Street Academy is a traditional high school for what many may consider to be untraditional young people, young people who, for one reason or another, get pushed through and get pushed out of traditional school systems. The school, a lot of kids here are in foster care. They're going through the same thing, so they don't care if you're going through it, they're like, they'll feel for you, but they're not gonna judge you. The kids that are going through foster care, that situation is inconsistent and it's unreliable. So you have all this stress out of where am I going tonight, who's going to care if I even come home, who's going to check that I have my food and my grooming and my homework, and that's a huge stress. So if you have a school where those things are consistent, every day we're going to check and see if you're okay. It's definitely more child-centered. It is the most child-centered place that I've ever worked. Here, all the teachers know you. They know your name, your grandparents, they know everything. The other school is like, you're just a number. They just, you know, like, number 42, your parent is here. We wanted to open up a place located at and partnered with The Door. The Door offers opportunities for youth that they normally wouldn't get in a school. They offer food, free health care. And so by us being a part of that, you know, we can build off of what they already have. We can extend our services. And there's no other place like that in the city of New York. As soon as I walked in here, I was like, this is, this is wave, like, this is fire, like, this school is hot. Like, the teachers actually stop the class to explain something to you or they help you like, in and out of school. Like, they, they call your house to check if you're okay or they see you depressed in school, they ask you, are you okay, you want to talk to somebody, you need something. I would pretty much say my favorite class is in the school, which is Ms. Barrow's class, Creative Writing. Thank you, Hector. Thank you, Dequasia. Almost everybody on point. Come on, Sergio. There's a lot of different topics that you can write about, making sure that it's conscious. What does that mean if it's conscious, though? Does that mean I'm going to write about money, cash? No. No. Cars, clothes, why not? You wrapping oh. wrap something meaningful. Something meaningful with a message. You want to have a message. You want to send a positive message, a powerful message to people. So that's what we're focusing on for this project, okay? Schools before this school, it was hard because it was like, I was never really accepted in there because I'm gay, so they used to like pick on me. If you would talk to any kids in my old school, they would tell you I'm the shy person. I used to like sit in the back of the room and just stay quiet. I stood to myself and I felt lonely. Now I don't have to keep anything in and I can trust more people. I never thought I could do something like that. <laughs> the school is different, really, really different. Like, you know, they don't judge people. My brother passed away, so um, I was having a lot of trouble. I would just sit there in class, spaced out. I started cutting school because I found it worthless. Like, why go if, you know, I don't understand it. Because I'm not good at math. I'm just really not. I think my skills at math will be at a third grade level. And I'm just being honest because, like, I really feel like I never learned math in school. For these kids, learning has been so painful. Our primary concern is making sure that these kids can like school again. Got that. Can I still I always thought that one thing I was able to do well as a teacher is help kids realize that math doesn't have to be as difficult as they think it is. And my favorite thing in the world is when kids thought they were bad at math and suddenly they're like, wait a minute, no I'm not. She even told me that to try and try and try. And she calls on me knowing I'm not an answer. We would do a disservice to our children by coddling them. 
Because when you leave out of here, no one is going to give you concessions for all of the things that you're going through. We can love them. We can support them. And the best way to do that is to show them how to love and support themselves. I want to be a fashion designer. And if that doesn't work, I want to be a psychologist. I want to study for psychology. All the struggles I've been through is not an excuse for me to fail. The students have to catch up. They have to graduate. The trick is providing them with as much social and emotional support and love as we can so that they know that we're not giving up on them. Our students have been given up on many, many times over and over again, and we're not going to do that here. We're not going to give up, and we believe that they will catch up and they will graduate. It's important to graduate because I don't want to just do nothing with my life. I'm interested in law, so I want to be a lawyer. I really want a good future. If it helps, you know, just to sh try, I'll do it. The reason I want to graduate from high school, my main reason is because I want to prove to my mom and that I I did something in life. That she gonna, I want her to be proud of me. That's it.